What is going on sports card fiends hopefully you guys are having a wonderful day and today we are here with a video on the ups and downs of the sports card market this time focused on the downs because that, that's where we're at we're in the downturn and this is where the fun happens i guess it's not fun for most people because you have items that have lost value but at the same time if you're someone that has some money and are looking to get into a market like this then it's a great time so it really just depends on what side you're on Ultimately, at the end of the day, no matter what you have, no matter what cards you have, you should be enjoying them. And if that's the case, then even if they went down and retraced a little bit, you'll still find some value in it yourself. So you'll be okay, right? No, mm, Well, that's what we'll find out. That's typically where the differentiation is made. If you're sitting here in a down market and you look at your cards and you're like, man, I don't know why I have these and they've lost money, so I want them less. That's a terrible spot to be in and one you shouldn't have gotten yourself into. Of course, it's easier to say now that it's all over, but as long as you're enjoying the cards and having a good time with the things that you're bringing into your collection, then it doesn't matter if they retrace 10, 20%. You just sit there, you hold, you have a great time, and if you need to sell one day, maybe you do. But that's the thing. If too many people are in a market trying to look for those quick stonks, you might see a retracement kind of look like what we've seen lately. And to be honest, that's not bad. Like fleshing out some of these flippers who think that they can just make tons of money off of the hobby, it's okay, that's fine. Because there's too many of them. To be honest, I don't open like any sort of wax, any sealed packs of almost any sort because people have gone absurd with it lately to the point to where there's just people online now that, I mean, there's another step in the process. Instead of these companies just sending us their, you know, their printed items that they made tons of money on and just having us enjoy them, now they, you know, end up sending it to someone who then uh, snags it from a store and then breaks it online and then sends it off. And it, there's just, there's more pieces being added, more layers to all this. And it's just shown kind of how far we've come. All that to say, there are certain aspects of the hobby that have just been an utter shit show like sealed products lately. So those are things you have to navigate. And that's an indicator that there was some unhealthy beings within the market and people that were purely here for profit. And so fleshing them out, that is fine because then you get back to some sort of normality where people can enjoy their stuff. They can buy in on more stuff if they'd like to. They can even open modern sealed stuff if they like. There's more options. There's more ways to engage. And at the end of the day, you know, even in a down market, Market, you still can build more of your collection on the downturn like whenever all these cards went to the moon unless you sold and then held money and are buying back in now you didn't you didn't gain wealth you still have the same amount of cards you still have the same amount of items that you did before if you just held on to these the whole time the true wealth is created whenever something goes far too high and you're like well now i should probably sell it because that's overvalued to me and then when it comes back down as all markets do there's ebbs and flows then you buy in on a downturn and you can buy much more than you had before because of those ebbs and flows so everyone is you know freaking out wondering why cards and all of these different collectibles all these different investment vehicles why they don't go up just non-stop and I mean, if that's what a lot of people are expecting is just nonstop returns, then it makes sense that something like this is going to happen because they were going to find out eventually that everything is just not nonstop returns. That's not how it works. So with that said, that is why a downturn in the market is nice to go and show some examples of where some wealth creation could have happened and also just how far the market's come to show you that, I mean, in reality, when you compare this to six months ago, soccer market, killing it. Compared to a year ago, absurd. Compared to two years ago, wasn't even a thing then. So putting it all in perspective will make it a little bit easier to digest. So I like to use Mbappe, Holland, Ronaldo, Messi stuff because it's a great example of what kind of the average person that gets into the hobby starts to think about and then it can show you kind of where they go from there. So an example of something that has done really well but also hasn't um, in the same timeline is this Mbappe sticker. So taking a look here. Looking at this graph here, we can see just the insane rise that these things have been on. Before 2020 was a thing, these were 123 bucks in a PSA 9 form, and then by July they were 1000 So they weighed 10x in less than a year, and then it fell back a little bit in December. It, about, it was about half its price. 
Um, this was, again, a good buying opportunity because as we've seen, you know, when those retracements happen, soon after the cycle continues and people get hyped about. This time it was the Champions League and potential Euros for Mbappe, and then the price dropped. And so everyone's wondering, why did the price drop? What's the rationale for it? Because Mbappe is in the Euros, so his price should have continued to go up, right? Now, the answer is no, because in reality, if it continues to go up from 4,000, that means that just a pack fresh Mbappe would have been, if it went up from there, like five, six, seven thousand uh, for a sticker that a year and a half ago to two years ago would have been 80 to 90 bucks, where he wouldn't have even known if you wanted to grade it. So you're saying in a year and a half time, this thing, sh like, I don't know. For the people that are trying to say that the market should have continued to keep growing, like that's the type of returns you're talking about that should have happened for the market to keep going, which it just cannot sustain because this thing has gone from 100 to 8K in a year and a half, potentially, if that's the trend that was supposed to happen. Now, of course, we live in this reality where they started to fall back. And to be honest, makes a ton of sense. Personally, I got an Mbappe PSA 9 back from PSA. I sold it because it was worth a ton more than I paid to get it. And that's that's the case a lot of these people are going to be in. So whenever this big high happens, everyone just takes for granted that that's the new baseline price. When in reality, PSA has a ton of supply of cards that are still going to be pushed out onto the market, and people will be willing to take tons of different monetary values for them. You have no clue. So whenever PSA pop of this stuff is very tight and just there's a kind of a stranglehold on it the prices can flare up but in reality until the entire kind of population of the card has been sucked up and you know collected or enjoyed by the market you're not going to see those returns continue to happen it's going to have to bounce up and down and up and down to try to find where it stabilizes until there's some stability which of course hasn't been anytime soon same thing goes for this holland rookie card this refractor tops chrome bundesliga psa 9 you can see here Pretty steady incline, not as much of a, a boom and then dip as a, uh, an Mbappe, although you don't see the boom because that happened, I guess, in July, which is before this graph. So, makes sense, but you can see kind of a steady incline. And then whenever Holland was going off and Dortmund was doing okay in the Champions League, they absolutely skied up to 4K from what was seven, eight, nine hundred, and now they've kind of fallen back. Now, again, nothing at this point has fallen back to where it was before. I mean, you can see, like, I guess pre-boom it was 1500 and then maybe it's back to 1500 now, but it's not anywhere near where it was before the highest of highs have been. Typically, the highs that you see on these graphs are not as high as the market truly is on these cards, and the lows are also not as low as people truly are on these cards. It's probably somewhere in the middle, and as you work your way down the graph, we'll figure out where that actually lies. Here, a messy example is 2006 World Cup card that people seem to enjoy. Uh, we can see that during the July, August, September, kind of boom that these cards in a PSA 9 did hit up to 1500 then they fell back down went back up again and then went back down you're seeing kind of a trend here and mostly what this is saying is that during the booms people want PSA cards they want goats they want to buy them but then as soon as the boom goes away I mean the dust kind of settles and people realize that they can get these cards you know tomorrow next week another month from now a year from now they can really get them most of the time whenever they like and that's what people have come to notice with some of this stuff and that's what you have to try to notice earlier and i know it's hard a lot of people that are somewhat new to the hobby typically want to buy psa graded stuff but you have to no, by at this point, like PSA has been backlogged forever. So everything that's getting pumped out of PSA is essentially on like a, an eight to nine month like ticking time bomb, maybe even a year of what was the past and what people liked before. And then it gets pumped back and then we see if the market can take it. And then after that, we just kind of hang out and people submit it as they like. But there, there's big waves of cards coming back, especially in the soccer world. And that's kind of what we're seeing is can the market withstand it? And to be honest, they've done a pretty good job because something like this, the 2006 World Cup card, I can tell you the Ronaldos, uh, like last June, I, I bought two maybe for like 30 a piece, something like that, and they were raw. They were pretty good shape. I didn't even consider grading them because I didn't think anything of it. I ended up selling them for like 100 a piece or 120. I thought I was cool. Um, so, I mean, just showing you kind of how far these things have come in such a short amount of time, you can understand why almost everyone that grades these gets a eight, an 8 or a 9 wants to then sell them for 1500 to to $1,000. Like, that is, that's some good money for something that you might have paid 50 bucks 
for. And here, this is an example. I, I should have shown more, I guess, with the Mbappes and Hollands, but if you stayed to the end, you get the you get the good stuff. Um, but I mean, this is what, like a, a fifth or a fourth of the total pop count of this PSA 9. And PSA 9, pretty good grade. I mean, they have these still in basically pack fresh condition. Um, and 20 to 25% of the pop is solely from the last, what is this, three months. Three months? Two months. Two months. Jesus. But yeah, that's just kind of some perspective on how much of this is coming back. When 20 to 25% of the pop comes back in a two month time, you're gonna see stuff like this happen. I mean, the prices naturally have to go down. I mean, how many people are gonna be willing to pay three grand every single time one of these pops out of PSA? Every single day, essentially, one of these is popping out of PSA. Is there someone every day willing to spend that three grand on it? Probably not, and we'll find that out over time, and that's why you have to just be really, really knowledgeable on whatever you're getting into, and why I recommend if you're getting into soccer, sports cards, anything, do a lot of research, really have some confidence in yourself that you're buying true things that are desirable, unique, collectible, all these different things. If they mean something to you, you've done your research, you know kind of what there is to know about the card and the market around it, then you'll be okay, you'll feel good about your purchase, and you won't be left holding something that is just getting pumped back from PSA as people try to race to the bottom. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, just a fun video where I get to kind of rant and talk about, you know, how the market's working right now. I know it's a little weird and everyone's kind of freaking out, but to be honest, I'm not incredibly shocked by some of this stuff. Personally, I've been getting off a bunch of my kind of young goat uh, slab stuff the last three months or so because it, it just got pretty freaking crazy, to be honest. I couldn't believe where some of this stuff was at, especially when you go back. And I know vintage isn't something I, I truly believe in in soccer because it's just so old that I, I don't know how much uh, demand there will truly be. Now, who knows? We'll see that play out over time. I still love it. I still have some. That's not to say, you know, I'm not disparaging it. I'm actually kind of complimenting it here because even I don't believe that much in vintage, but if you look back at vintage and then compare it to some of these modern prices, it is just astounding. So it makes sense to me. I understand why people wouldn't feel as confident in some of the modern stuff. And personally, I am losing a ton of confidence in any modern stuff that's been printed because there is a ton of product coming out for soccer. And personally, I don't want to support it and I don't want to be a part of it, but that's just me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like. Anything you want to see me talk about, feel free to let me know in a comment down below or any questions you have, be happy to help. And if you want to see more videos like this as soon as they go live, make sure to subscribe. And with that said, hopefully you guys have a wonderful day and uh, peace.